this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about thermochemistry. Today's topic is enthalpy and calorimetry. If we first start with enthalpy with the symbol H, enthalpy is defined as H equals to E plus P multiplied by V, where E is the internal energy, P is for pressure and V for volume. Now, at a constant pressure, we know that work is defined as minus P multiplied by delta V. And we have discussed earlier that the change on the internal energy is equal to heat plus work. Therefore, if we replace work by its value or by its expression, we get delta E. It's equal to Q. Now, with the subscript P, that means that P is at constant pressure minus P multiplied by delta V. Now, we can rearrange this expression to give a Q at constant pressure is equal to delta E plus P delta V. Now, if you look at the expression of H again, this gives us the change on the enthalpy is equal to the change on the internal energy plus P delta V. Looking at the expression of QP and delta H, this means that delta H is equal to the heat at constant pressure. Now, in a similar way to the sign of heat, we can discuss the signs of delta H. Now, before that, you should know that delta H of a reaction it's equal to the sum of the enthalpies of the products minus the sum of the enthalpies of the reactants. In this case, looking at the energy diagram or the enthalpy diagram of an exothermic reaction, we can see that the enthalpy of the reactants is higher than the enthalpy of the products, and therefore, delta H is going to be negative. For an endothermic reaction or an endothermic process, the enthalpy of the product is higher than the enthalpy of the reactants, and therefore, delta H in this case will be positive. So, to summarize this part, for an exothermic reaction, delta H will always be negative. For an endothermic reaction, delta H will be positive. Now, let's discuss calorimetry. Calorimetry is the science of measuring heat. In calorimetry, we will define a very important term, which is the heat capacity. The heat capacity is equal to the heat absorbed by a solution or by a, by a substance divided by the increase in temperature. In another way, we can define the heat capacity as the energy needed to be given to a system or to a substance to increase its temperature by one degree. We have two types of heat capacity. We have the specific heat capacity, where we will uh, give it the symbol small s, and the molar heat capacity, where we will give it the symbol of capital S. Now, the specific heat capacity, this is when the amount is measured in mass or in gram and in this case the unit of the specific heat capacity will be joule per degree celsius multiplied by gram for molar heat capacity this is when we measure the amount in mole and therefore the unit of the molar heat capacity will be in joule per degree celsius per mole now, of course, we can use other units such as Kelvin instead of degree Celsius or kilogram instead of gram. Now, let's take a look on this table where we can see uh, examples on specific heat capacities. So for water, liquid, uh, the specific heat capacity is 4.18. For water solid, which means ice, the specific heat capacity is 2.03. For, let's take iron, it's 0 0.45. So what these numbers mean again, this means we will need 4.18 joules to increase the temperature of one gram of water liquid for one degree. Now the instrument that's used in calorimetry is called calorimeter. 
we have two types of calorie meter. We have the constant pressure calorie meter, which is called the coffee cup calorie meter, or the constant volume calorie meter, which is called a bomb calorie meter. So let's further discuss these two types of calorie meters. We will first start with the constant pressure calorie meter. Now a constant pressure calorie meter is called the coffee cup calorie meter because it's actually made out of coffee cups. Now as you can see in here, we have a stirrer, we have a thermometer, we have two styrofoam cups, and of course with a cover. Now, this is going to be the coffee cup calorie meter. How this would help us to measure the heat when we fill it with a solution and the reaction happens, as you can see, the temperature will increase and we can measure the change on the temperature before and after reaction. How this is going to help us measuring the heat? Now, we know that the heat lost by the system, which is our reaction, should be equal to the absolute value of the heat gained by the solution, which is going to be, in this case, the surroundings. Now, we consider the styrofoam cups insulators, and they don't absorb heat. So now, how can we measure the heat? The heat is equal to the specific heat capacity of water, in this case, since the reaction is happening in water, multiplied by the mass of the solution, multiplied by the change on the temperature that we have measured. Let's take an example on the constant pressure calorie meter. Assuming that we mix 50 milliliter of one molar HCl plus 50 milliliter of one molar sodium hydroxide. The initial temperature is 25 degrees. Since this reaction is exothermic, the temperature will increase to 31.9 degrees. From these two temperatures, we can calculate delta T, which is going to be, in this case, 6.9 degrees Celsius. Now, these are aqueous solutions, so we will consider that our solution is mainly water. And for that, we can use the specific heat capacity for water, which is equal to 4.18 joule per degree Celsius per gram. Now, the mass of the solution can be determined as 50 plus 50, which is 100 milliliter, and that's going to be the volume. If we multiply it by the density of water, since we are considering that our solution is mainly water, we get 100 grams. So now we have the specific heat capacity, we have the mass, we have the change on the temperature, we can calculate the heat. Now, as I said previously, the heat released by the reaction it's equal to the heat absorbed by the solution and it's equal to specific heat capacity multiplied by the mass multiplied by delta T. Now doing the math, we find that the heat is equal to 2.9 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 joules. Now this is the heat. How can we calculate the enthalpy change during this process? Now the relationship between enthalpy and heat is given in the following expression. The absolute value of delta H is equal to Q divided by N. Now, what is N? N is the number of mole of H plus reacted. Or we can say N is the number of mole of OH minus reacted. Or if we consider that this reaction is producing water, we can say that N is the number of mole of water produced. So it doesn't matter if we choose one of the reactants or one of the products as long as it's the limiting agent. Now, how can we calculate the number of mole of H plus reacted by multiplying the volume multiplied by the molarity? And that's going to give us 5.0 times 10 to the power minus 2 mole of H plus. Now that we have heat and we have the number of mole, we can calculate the enthalpy change, which is going to be, in this case, 5.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 joule per mole. Now, as you can see, this is the absolute value of delta H. So how do we know the sign of delta H? Since the temperature has increased, this means that the solution has absorbed heat, and therefore the reaction is exothermic. If the reaction is exothermic, we know that for exothermic reactions, 
delta H will be negative and therefore delta H will be minus 5.8 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 joule per mole. Now a very important remark about the constant pressure calorie meter, we say it's constant pressure because the pressure is not changing which is going to be the atmospheric pressure since we just have an open system the cover here it's not going to uh, isolate the system or the inside of the calorie meter from the outside atmosphere now let's discuss the constant volume calorie meter now the constant volume calorie meter from its name the volume will not change however because it's made out of hard materials the pressure will be able to change but the volume will not change so now as you can see there's a major difference between a constant pressure calorie meter and a constant volume calorie meter in terms of structure or shape now as always we have a stirrer we have a thermometer we have the hardware that includes the outside insulation box or structure and the inside chamber where the reaction will happen. This calorie meter can be filled with water that will help us to measure the change on the temperature. Now in the inside chamber, this is where the reaction happens. So when we mix the reactants, the reactants will react. Usually this is a violent reaction and that's why it's called bomb calorie meter. So there will be kind of a small explosion inside and there will be a heat transfer from the reaction to the outside now when the heat is transferred from the reaction to the outside we can measure the change on the temperature of the water and the calorie meter using the thermometer now in a similar way we can say that the heat released by the reaction is equal to the heat absorbed by the calorie meter so not only water it's going to be water and the hardware and in this case the heat absorbed by the calorie meter is equal to the heat capacity of the calorie meter multiplied by the change on the temperature now for a bump calorie meter we said it's going to be a sealed container and therefore the volume doesn't change and delta V is equal to zero if delta V is equal to zero, work in this case will also be equal to zero. Now, we know that delta E is equal to heat plus work. Work is equal to zero. And in this case, delta E will be equal to heat at constant volume. So that's why we have the subscript V here. Now, as I have mentioned before, now we have a heat capacity for the calorie meter itself and therefore the energy released by the reaction is equal to the energy absorbed by the container which is equal to the heat capacity of the calorie meter multiplied by the change on the temperature now how can we find the heat capacity of the calorie meter now we have said that a bump calorie meter it's constituted from two parts, the hardware and the water. So the hardware such as the metal made from and the water that we fill in the calorie meter. Now the hardware has a heat capacity that's gonna be C hardware and water has also heat capacity. Now the heat capacity of water can be calculated from the specific heat capacity of water that we have explained earlier, 4.18 joule per degree Celsius per gram, and multiplied by the mass of water that we know it because we filled the calorie meter with water. So in this case, to calculate the heat released by the reaction, we can use the heat capacity of the calorie meter the heat capacity of the calorie meter is equal to the sum of the heat capacity of water plus heat capacity of the hardware. Heat capacity of water can be calculated from specific heat capacity of water and the mass of water. And therefore, we can say that the heat is equal to the specific heat capacity of water multiplied by the mass of water multiplied by delta T plus the, the heat capacity of the hardware multiplied 
by delta t. Usually in exercises or problems like this, you will have all the terms except one and you will be asked to find the unknown value. The main difference between constant volume calorimeter or a constant pressure calorimeter is that the constant volume calorimeter has a heat capacity. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.